Um, hello everyone, I'm Sarah Murphy. I am the prospective Welsh Labour candidate for the Senate elections in May next year. And this is the third one in my series where I'm talking to local Bridgend entrepreneurs, finding out how and why they set up their businesses, how they're getting on, and also how we can support them. So I'm really excited about this one today, Lisa. Um, as you know, <laughs> we are customers, we are huge fans. I love sharing all of your content, especially on Instagram. It's just, it's just lovely <laughs> to have watched like how the, how Thank the business grows. So, I mean, when did you, I've, I've only become aware of you really this year, but when did you set up Double Trouble? Why, what's the whole, what got you into this? What got you to set up the business? Um, well, I always give the same answer. Um, I had twins. And uh, I needed the coffee. That, that, <laughs> that short and sweet is kind of what happened. Um, what it was, uh, we, me and my husband always loved coffee. We've always gone to the coffee festivals. Uh, we had the girls. Um, we was given a, a rare day out where we could go to the London Coffee Festival. Had a few too many espresso martinis. Um, and bought a roaster. So... <laughs> That was the start of our hobby, um, but it wasn't until we we moved out um, of, of military accommodation into our own house yeah. we um, we turned it into a business. And you're based in Kempton Hill, aren't you? I am. Which yeah. Is so beautiful. yeah, I, I roast from home. So this is this is sort of you know the roast roastery, the 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 everything. <laughs> For somebody, because my, my partner is the kind of um, coffee buff in our house. So for somebody who doesn't know, like, so how how big is a is a roaster and how kind of you know how does it all work? I guess. Okay. Um, well, I, I get in obviously the green beans, and I started on a a small one kilo roaster. So I used to be able to get three bags out of a roast. Okay. The roast takes about. 14 15 minutes okay okay so uh, it was quite labor intensive yeah. um i can now do i do about seven and a half kilos every 14 minutes now um yeah so i have a, a big 10 kilo roaster oh my and um yeah yeah so <laughs> i as well at my house in the garage my husband has a shed i've got the garage <laughs> <laughs> brilliant that's fantastic yeah so you so, get so that's how, and then you realise, well, we can do this on a bigger scale, and we can sell these. Yeah, yeah. So what what we done? We obviously, my husband works. I wanted to stay at home with the girls, yeah. so I just started doing um, the farmers market on a Saturday. Oh. So I used to roast for that. Um, and Christmas markets or summer fates or anything like that, really. Yeah. And then it got to a point where um, I had a little coffee van, new business over in, in Lantuit, and she stuck with me from, from the beginning. Um, and we, I, I just realised that there's no way I can keep up or look for more business unless I've got a bigger roaster. Yeah. But roasters are about the same price as a car. So yeah. they're super expensive. Um, so I was able to get one of the Kickstart grants. Oh, brilliant. Council. Oh, fantastic. And it absolutely made it affordable. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was so chuffed, so chuffed. Um, so it, it half the price of the roaster. Um, and then... From that, I've been able to work with more s new businesses like the Hideout I in, know. in yeah. Reserve. Um, you know, and and still being able to look for more and being able to to do it. Yeah, yeah. Plus all my other commitments and the girls and everything else. Yeah. And like you said today, you can go and pick them up from school afterwards and everything. Exactly. Which yeah. Is so important. But also, then it, the company is named after them as well, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I um, you know, I I don't I don't mind saying it. I um, I I had the sort of postnatal depression after the girls and mm. um i think when you have twins and it's all you know my first kids as well yeah. um and uh, everyone used to say to me oh double trouble like in the supermarket and they meant nothing by it they were saying yeah, it in jest yeah. but it really got to me yeah. and i'm like if i don't change this into a positive it's really gonna irritate me so uh yeah me and my husband named it after the girls as double trouble coffee 
And then whenever I got someone saying, oh, double trouble, I'm like, yes, double trouble coffee. Do you want a business card? You know? <laughs> I love that. What a good way of like turning it around and everything, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a bit tongue-in-cheek and it's a good laugh and the girls think it's funny. They love you know. it. Yeah. You know, you put some, so, you know, kind of like photos and little kind of um, glimpses of them on your social media and things. And yes. Absolutely gorgeous. They'll be, I think as, as well, obviously when they get older and things, you know, to have a whole company named after them is pretty Yeah, cool. yeah. yeah. You know, they, they know their coffee beans already. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I was, I, um, I said, I said to you before, so yeah, we've got these two at the moment yeah uh and you deliver them and everything it's a wonderful like subscription isn't it and i was actually on the stronger together regent doing a chat the other day and they were asking for like um you know green tips for christmas and christmas presents and obviously yeah. one of the best things you can do is support local and if you have these all the way from kenvig hill then the carbon footprint is very low on those kinds yeah. of things and who doesn't want a coffee subscription yeah you know? and the bags that they've just changed they're now recyclable as well so yeah well, actually now you mention that i popped into the station in coy church yeah and they're obviously jess and beth are also doing this and they mentioned that to me they said that you just kind of um switch the packaging and everything as well yeah so and i know that um when i first got in touch with you i was asking you about because obviously there's lots of questions when it comes to coffee about the ethics of it yeah. and you were really good and you came back and you explained a lot to me about that so can you just kind of explain to everybody a little bit about how you source them and all that kind of stuff yeah yeah um a lot of people are very you know uh fair trade it's brilliant obviously everything behind it is brilliant um but actually direct trade is better than fair trade okay. so being a really small roaster mm. i can't really be importing loads of coffee because yeah. you know I, I don't have the funds for you know 30 50 100 bags of coffee yeah um so what what I've been doing is working with um a, a company in Kent and they are able to to source it from a much bigger supplier um and then everything comes from you know origin um, it's fair trade and, you know, Rainforest Alliance and everything like that. Um, but as from, hopefully it should land in March, I have been talking directly to a farmer in Brazil. And we've been Instagramming each other and chatting. Yeah. Um, and, and there's, a, you know, a brilliant company here in the UK who, you know, they arrange all the transportation, the shipping and everything and the storing of it. And um, I know exactly what the farmer's been paid. Yeah. I know how much this company takes mm -hmm. um, and me and him have now got a relationship. So this will be coming directly from farm, which is much better than fair trade. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. he'll be earning a lot more out of it. I see. And you've managed to do a lot of that then through social media and through Instagram, I guess. Please. Yeah, social media, social, Sorry, <laughs> social media does help. Like, uh, no. and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah so social media has been a big help and uh, and helped you not only like but with the relationships with somebody in brazil as well yeah absolutely so i get to know my clients through social media i get to know you know the, on this case the farmer the yeah. the makeup of it and who you know who it's run by the the kind of middlemen that help me i know them i know their ethos and their company mm -hmm. um so social media helps a lot and it to be honest, that is my main way of marketing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't do adverts or anything like that. I'm, I'm a small roastery. I'm doing it on my own. Um, yeah. So it's all word of mouth. And that obviously comes from the social media side of things as well. Absolutely. And the other thing, so I was going to ask you, so what's been, uh, what's been the biggest challenge that you've had with the business? I think um, probably cash flow. Okay. Yeah. Not not running out of money, but the actual, you know, when you're such a small business, you have your setup costs, which you expect. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, if I'm going over after wholesale clients, it's like, oh, it's a 30 day invoice. And as a, as a new person who hasn't sort of dealt with shops and, and stuff like that, I'm like, oh, right. Okay. So right at the beginning, that that was a bit of a, a stumbling block and this time of year as well you 
you know, buying the coffee, you roast it all up, you give it away. And it is, it's just, you know, a thing that you have to buy in. When you're working on really small margins, sometimes the cash flow is a bit of a stumbling block. Um, but, you know, it's, it's only because of my business, it's really expensive. You have to buy everything in, you know? So um, that, and I think getting, getting known. The social media helps, yeah. obviously word of mouth. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of competitors out there as well and really big names. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sometimes that's a little bit hard to, to overcome. Yeah, of course. I mean, we actually, um, we switched from one because um, again, my partner had a subscription uh, with another, another Welsh um, brand. But when he saw then that you were uh, just down the road from us, that's what made him switch. He was like, we yeah. support local and we spend local. And, um, and, and I think that's, yeah, I think, I think that's what you need really, isn't it? I, I think, especially at the moment, the whole spending local thing, you know, um, you buy from me, I'm buying from someone else who's local, who's buying something else local and everything stays within our area. And we're all, we're all earning a living out of it. Yeah. It makes such a massive difference. Huge. And I was at the, um, I was actually at the hideout yesterday and, uh, and I did a post about it because now, so the hideout have local cakes from Flower Bar yeah. Cakes. Your coffee. And they are gorgeous. They are <laughs> I, I still haven't, um, I still haven't gotten there early enough to have them. Cause I they feel go. Like, I know. <laughs> I feel like you have to be there at like 10 or 11 and I usually kind of like, you know, um, head over about two or three in the afternoon and I know I know they won't I know they won't be there but I'm determined I'm gonna get there yeah. as I can and get them <laughs> so yeah so flower power cakes and I love that they do vegan options yeah or coffee which is also being done in kind of um like beetroot and turmeric and right all of that yeah stuff. love it um what else is it tea by the sea um, yeah. is there, which is again lovely and independent and then also I was over the yesterday and there was a clean oh I'm gonna say this wrong clean company uh, that's based in Cardiff I believe homemade kind of like gorgeous hand sanitizers and creams and stuff so that's like yeah. that's four extra businesses yeah independent local Welsh businesses that are being incorporated into the hideout in Kenvik Hill nature exactly exactly you know what it's it's kind of it's all of us small guys helping each other out um by supporting each other you know it, it is super easy and probably cheaper yeah. to go for these great well it is to go for these great big brands and everything else but i i think um you know i always do a happy dance when emma sends me her order and you know every time we walk the dog over there we you know have coffee we have a chat and and stuff like that so yeah there's not just sort of the support for the business side of things but actually you make really good friends for yeah. the people that you're working with as and well I, and I think that that promotes then like a resilience for our local economy yeah and I also think that it does come down to the customer and that's the consumer and the people who will be watching this, you know, like you can make that decision because as you said, maybe for some of these companies, it would be cheaper to buy in bulk from large companies. But then if as a customer, you're prepared to go the extra mile and spend a little bit more, look at yeah. the benefit that then has for five different independent companies it's incredible exactly you know if someone's got a question about the coffee i'll answer it I know. You know? Way um, <laughs> it's, it's like if you had a question about the cakes yeah. you know it, it, your question would then be answered and you have this contact with people that you don't get in a supermarket you know or, or any big company yeah. You know, so it, no. It, being able to do this, it's lovely. You know, there's that real kind of like sense of community, isn't there? You know, and like you, said, you get to meet people and get to really understand the story behind yeah. it. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so I asked you about the challenges. What about what's been the best bit? You know what? Well, if you haven't been able to guess, I like to talk quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and my my best bit is markets. I love them. Mm. You know, I love being able to talk to people. Mm. Um, and all right, it's only about coffee, but I always end up finding out a hell of a lot more about people. Um, and, and that is, that is my favourite, my favourite thing. Um, having adult conversations with people <laughs> and not with three-year-olds is also a bonus, but it just, it makes me feel proud about my business and what, and what I do, you know, 
Um, I might be small, but you know, I'm, I am really proud of where we've got to in two years. We're literally two years old. And, um, you know, I like telling people about the business and, and where it comes from and what I do. So, yeah. yeah. So, in terms of, um, so some tips, I guess, because there might be people out there who are thinking about doing the same. Um, and it's not an easy time, you know, to kind of like be setting up businesses and everything. But um, what would your advice be? Um, my advice would be if, if there is something that you are doing as a hobby and you are sitting on the fence about whether to make it into a business, mm. do it. Mm. You know, you, you will sit there and wonder for a long, long time. If you try it and it doesn't work, you've lost nothing. Mm. You know, if you uh, try it and you make it a success and it makes you happier, makes your family happier and you can earn a little bit as well it's it's a win-win situation um i would definitely say look into what grants are available to you yes because if it wasn't for that kickstart grant i'd still be working on a one kilo roaster and i probably i might have even given up by now you yeah. know because it was so time consuming um was that, from, was that from the gen council as well yeah okay wonderful oh that's yeah. brilliant and, um, you know, they made it very, very straightforward for me to understand what was going on and how to apply. Um, so, yeah, I, that, that would be my biggest bit of advice. Don't think that you're going to do it all on your own. There are a lot of people who give you very, very good advice. Yeah. And I think as well, you can do so much with, um, with Instagram, right? Yeah. I mean, like I said, all yeah. the companies I just mentioned, like they're all on Instagram and uh, links to their shop and you can kind of do so much with that now. You can. And I must admit, um, I'm, I'm a little bit of a, you know, I'm a better roaster than I am on, on the computer and my website and stuff like that. I'm, I'm a much better roaster, but I've had to get to grips with Instagram. Um, you know, I've had to get to grips with um, posting things or what sort of things people are be interested in, what works, what doesn't, um, and just persevere. You know, it's free. It's free and people get to see it. Um, so, yeah. And you, look, and you can tag everything and those kinds of things, isn't it? Yes, yeah. There's something I, I still need to do more of. <laughs> Brilliant. Tagging, hashtagging and all of this, and I'm just like, oh, my goodness. Um, but, yeah, I, I do try. But it's um, like, you know, and at the moment with the um, online markets. Yeah. You know, Christmas um, and they've worked extremely well they're busy you you know have to work at them yeah. um but yeah that's that's brilliant well that's what I was going to say to you as well because obviously you've only had the business for a couple of years and then COVID has come along and dominated most of this year yeah. so what has the impact been on your business I, I expect one of them is as you said you can't get out and do the fears that you like doing yeah I think with COVID it, it can go one or two ways I can look at it in a negative, I haven't been able to grow my business like I wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, coffee shops and everything have found it exceptionally hard with having to close, yeah. um, especially those ones who haven't got outside space. You know, it's been really hard on them. So me going in there going, oh, hi, do you want some of my coffee? It's, 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 not, it's not nice. So um, I haven't been able to do all that. I haven't been able to do all the summer fairs, which is a massive part of my year that and Christmas um but on the flip side you know the positives is um I'm in an industry where I I can still do the farmer's market because it's been open throughout it's shopping outside yes of course yeah I have been able to do that um my business has grown because of the hideout and other you know uh coffee vans that that are out there um you know there's pure bean and Pic piccolo blue and and things like that they have still been out because they're outside and actually with them being outside they've been a little hub for people because they can socially distance but they're actually getting to pass their neighbors and say hi and check that everyone's okay mm -hmm. so these little coffee vans have, have have been sort of the center of these of these little communities mm -hmm. um, and obviously if they're open that means that I'm roasting for them. Um, and my business is better this year than last year because I post out everything. Yes, okay, yeah. So, you know, I, oh, I've got a 
be or I'm very thankful very very thankful you know um I'm one of these ones that weren't entitled to anything because right. of so you know there, it wasn't like I could ask for a handout or anything which actually is fine you know knowing where I am now mm -hmm. um, you know it isn't something that I needed mm -hmm. whereas I know friends and other small businesses if they didn't have that that would have been you know you would they would have lost a hell of a lot of businesses yeah definitely. absolutely so, no for sure yeah yeah well i mean yeah i think um i think i was just i was saying to you earlier on you know i have been talking to some people as part of this series and uh and there's just nothing they could have done it, you know the, the kind of businesses that they have have just not been able to function under these um circumstances you know but that's really positive to hear that i hope that it does pick up again next year as well and it can grow more um but you are right there's lots of um coffee shops in bridgen that sadly just don't have the outdoor space especially yes. in the bridgen town center a little bit better yeah. in port Paul, isn't it um, it is yeah i mean those who have had outside space i you know that's that's been lucky you know um and i have seen the odd the odd shop you know locally that that's closed and they had only just opened you know and i just think that's really bad timing um but i think the more we stick with the local thing yeah you know, that that is what's going to make a difference between you know a shop being able to stay open or not i agree and we do have the power to do that we absolutely um, and that's why really I wanted to do this series. It is to kind of, like I said, you know, we've got so many wonderful local businesses. They are all kind of linking up with each other like yours is. Um, yeah. And we do have the power to support that and choose that. Um, I am actually, I, I can smell these now because <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show them again to people because they are just absolutely wonderful. Look at those. Uh, and I just think it's gorgeous branding and they're beautifully done and they feel really special actually like when they come through the door and it's just lovely um, having met you properly today now and thinking that these are the come different for people all the way in Kensey Hill you know? <laughs> thank you oh no worries no worries I um, I enjoy doing it that, I think that's the main thing you know yeah. you enjoy doing it enjoy talking to people and you know then it doesn't feel like work does it <laughs> <laughs> the last question I was going to ask, which is when I kind of ask everybody as well, because obviously it's a series of Bridgend entrepreneurs, like, um, you know, why, why can everybody feel? Why Bridgend? Why is it so um, important to you, I suppose, to be a Bridgend business? Um, so my, my husband's in the forces. Mm -hmm. We've moved around a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell I'm not local by my accent, you know. Um, <laughs> some of us have to be. But we didn't want to leave. Uh, we were, we was down in St Athens, and, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to leave the area. You know, it's got, it has a nice feel. You know, um, and so we we moved up, moved up this way, and and I love it. You know, um, it has got a real sense of commu community, which actually big towns kind of can easily lose. Um, but I think you've you've got really good groups, especially online. Um, and we all make a, a brilliant community and, you know, and I, I live here, I roast here, I work here, my kids go to school, you know, here and yeah, and that's all that matters is that it's all, yeah, nice place, nice place to live, nice people. Yeah, I think that's lovely, that's such a lovely thing to say and I do think maybe, um, you know, after this year, people are maybe starting to appreciate a little bit more actually having everything within like, you know, 20 minutes from your home. You know, it's yeah. kind of nice to have to be able to have a look. I'm so sorry, that's my puppy who is <laughs> in the background. It's in here now. It sounds really weird. Do you know what? She was fast asleep until I started talking to you. And whilst I've been talking to you, she has decided to pull out every toy she can possibly find and is running Brilliant. around. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I've shut the dog and the husband down and the kids are at school, so I'm all good. <laughs> I know, so you, sent me that, you sent me that meme, that picture, didn't you, of like having to okay. kind of tie up the cat and things. The cat particularly have this habit of kind of like dancing across the screen, I know. Absolutely. Like my blooming puppy that's running around at the moment around my feet, so. <laughs> right, I'm going to let you go because I know you've got to go the girls up from school I do. yeah so uh, yeah it's about time to to pick them up so. <laughs> i'm gonna be putting like we're pre-recording this of course because again this is what we can do now you know technology yeah. and i'm even working around but 
we're going to be putting this out one evening so people will be watching this in the night so yes i hope everybody's um really enjoyed this and lisa it's just been lovely to have a chat with you thank you very much i appreciate you asking it was oh. it's fab <laughs> no, I, I i just feel um i feel very proud i think it's i think it's absolutely wonderful to have you know your business here in bridge End. and i just really hope like i said that people support and kind of like log on and, and go and have a look now and um and order from you if they can if they're into coffee it's wonderful coffee beautiful coffee even you know i think especially with covid right now as well if people need to post things they're they're light and so we're doing a lot a lot of postal stuff at the moment for presents love it love it good present great present <laughs> thank you lisa thank you <laughs> brilliant right i'll stop recording